Hi, I'm Garrett, and this is the making of my sci-fi cinematic, Tales of Accretion, Season 1, Episode 1. I have very high hopes for the future of this. <laughs> I have both the cinematic itself as well as the raw VFX breakdown without commentary linked below. If you want to hear my commentary about the making of the cinematic, talk about what I did well, what I didn't, talk about my process and everything, then feel free to stick around. It's going to be pretty raw and rambly, so be warned. First, I'm going to go through the VFX breakdown and talk about uh, what I did, my process, stuff like that. Now, something I haven't included anywhere in the cinematic or in the VFX breakdown uh, that I did spend a good amount of time actually planning this out. So writing a script, kind of coming up with the story and the different shots I wanted. I even did like a block out inside of uni. So I kind of knew the amount of shots, the constraints, and everything beforehand, which definitely helped a lot in terms of scope creep and everything, just making sure I got this done. Also, I wanted to submit to the MSI uh, Creator Awards as well as the Rookies Awards, which I will submit in uh, a few days because I need to uh, need to do that because the deadline's in a few days. Um, that helped a lot in terms of just making sure uh, I got, got this done. And although it was pretty short and not that complex, I felt like I got the major elements done. It was really just a lot of polish that was left that I wanted to just put more time into the detail, but it wasn't the major elements, which I'm, I'm happy with. Okay, so the first uh, major point, here is the mining ship. This is the, the hero asset, if you will, the major asset. I spent considerably the most time on it. Honestly, I probably spent more time on this than everything else uh, combined, um, but that's because it was a major part. So I used Blender to model it and I made use of a lot of the modifiers inside of Blender. Maybe not a lot, but I used the mirror and array modifiers a lot as typical for me just to make it easier to model the different symmetrical elements and if I needed to go in and change the elements so I had the mirror as a good base. I also used Bezier curves for the pipes here just to make it a little bit more organic in terms of shape. I separated out a lot of different elements here so for example the different parts of the drill separated them out to make it easier in terms of animating in Unity for UV unwrapping for going back and forth between texturing and modeling just made that a little bit easier. Now some stuff I did kind of mess up on I wish I would have done better for example, the, the greeblies, a different detail here on the hole, they're all one element. So I wish I kind of separated them into just the base hole without that detail and then the detail so I could just make it easier in terms of adding it in the future, but also so I didn't need to redo as much in terms of UV unwrapping and texturing. Also, I just got to figure out better workflows in terms of like working on angles. So for example, the inside of the ship here, um, it's on an angle, the walls here. So it kind of made it hard to model the different the cabinets and stuff. I had to go in and make sure I had the rotations correct and now it's kind of a pain, but I'm pretty sure there's plugins to help you with that. I just gotta find them. Also another issue was using, I think it's called instances, which is like Blender's prefab sort of system. I was trying to use that with the different like panels and cabinets and stuff like that, but I was having some issues in terms of like scaling and assigning the materials and UV unwrapping. So I gotta figure out how to use uh, that better. But you know, overall models looking pretty good. Again, I wanted to add a lot more detail, but it's definitely a good start. Okay, so now we're going on to the texturing. So I did my texturing inside of Substance Painter, and here you can see better some of the interior elements. I was utilizing a lot of metals and plastics and different emissive materials to give that more sci-fi futuristic look. So there's a lot of like gun metals, bronze, irons. You can get a better view of the interior panels. I added some different um, like gauges and knobs and the pipes and everything to try to give it a little bit more of that kind of um, more like I guess steampunkish feel or, or more so just that it's more like industrial and mechanical rather than one of these like really nice fleet ships which this is not because it's a mining ship. Now I wish I added some more like handcrafted detail where I actually painted in the substance painter rather than just kind of slapping on the base procedural materials and substance although those are great and they got me really far. I wish I had spent more time adding some like different generators or, or hand painted detail just to give it more of a, uh, a lived in looked and more more personality, if you will, just so it's not that kind of standard looking material. Also for the future, I want to utilize smart materials more, rather custom smart materials that I create. So for example, if I wanted to make a military ship for the same faction or group, whatever I decide to do it with it for the future, uh, that I can utilize smart materials so that instead of, you know, recopying uh, the materials over or kind of, um, messing up the consistency to look, I can just re reuse the smart material and keep that look consistent across uh, ships that may have a similar uh, origin. And now here's a ship rendered, which is a strong word when it's in UD. I just kind of dragged and dropped everything in. I ended up adding some 
uh, different elements inside of uni as well so i did the lighting i did some basic ui work it's not that great but it's some sort of uh, interface also added um, some different particles so kind of hard to see here but you'll see in the cinematic i have like the engine particle as well as uh, the spark particles both of those being pretty much the base uni uh, vfx graph samples but they look pretty good so thanks uni <laughs> so i kind of cheated when it comes to the pipes because I just kind of kept it a base looking material, wasn't any detail in it, or at least I decided to do that to make it easier. I just assigned different materials to them inside of uni just to give them to different colors and kind of that metallic plasticky look. So I think overall I spent like five to six hours in total modeling, texturing and rendering this. Again, I think it turned out pretty good. I wish I added you know more detail, but that just comes with, with more time. I also kind of wish I added some more stuff like animated things so whether i had stuff like swinging like in the background or different moving elements different like gears and stuff moving also maybe just more animated ui and stuff like that it would have just brought the ship more to life um, but again just more time would be, need to be put into that um so that's just a future thing okay now uh, my favorite part the live action bit so if you see the cinematic there's a uh, shot where i irl me is inside the digital ship so the first part of doing that was filming it. So here's my very janky film setup to do all this. So uh, for lighting, I have my one blue light, which actually I'm using now uh, on the side as like a monitor light, as well as on the other side, I use my computer monitor as well as a, a, light, a lightsaber as my backlight. So the white backlight. I have my tripod here where I'm sitting. And I also have a, a green screen, which I'll talk about in a bit. And then you can see me here. Uh, looking really happy because um, I had all my costume and everything uh, here decided to film this. I bought a jumpsuit, so doing my best Amos impression from the Expanse, as well as uh, got some mining goggles. It doesn't make sense because I'm inside the ship and yeah, I wouldn't even need them, uh, but it, it just adds to the look, which I, which I liked. I ended up planning all this out in uni beforehand, so I knew generally the lighting and the angle and everything, so it made it look a little bit better when it terms of compositing later on. So now after I filmed everything, I got my shot that I liked the best. I went into After Effects and did some rotoscoping. Now rotoscoping is basically the process of taking an image element or like a video and separating out the different parts. So for example, uh, in this case, I didn't want anything in the background to be in the final scene. So for example, uh, you can see here, like the, the background elements, the green screen itself, I didn't want any of that in the final image because I wanted to be inside the spaceship. So I did rotoscoping, which is basically selecting different parts of the image uh, and separating them out. Now, I wouldn't have even needed to do this if I did my green screen correctly, and I did not. So uh, at least what I think I did wrong was that I lighted, I lit <laughs> the green screen uh, incorrectly because I had the light on me and the green screen so close. You can see the blue of the green screen, which because of the blue light, it turned kind of blue is very similar to my skin. So basically when I tried to key out the green screen, it would key out part of my skin. I didn't obviously want that. So instead I just did rotoscoping, which honestly probably ended up doing better anyway. Now, but it's a little bit more uh, complex and time consuming, or rather time intensive, at least on the After Effects end for it to figure everything out. So basically to rotoscope, you just have to paint out what your image is. So you can see here, I'm painting different elements. What is what I want to show and what I don't want to show. I can paint those different elements in or out. And then it uses some like machining, machine learning algorithm on the back end to figure out uh, what is the object I want to select. And it did, honestly, it did a really good job. Like I haven't used Roto Brush, Roto Brush uh, much and I know it's it's gotten some past updates um, and hopefully some future ones as well, but it does a really good job uh, off, off, the, uh, off the bat, um, you know, I did end up missing some elements, but overall it still looks pretty good. So I'm very happy with After Effects of having a feature like this. And now here's kind of the process of me taking the uh, raw footage of me and putting that into the final uh, pixel image. So here's the raw footage of me, just straight from my phone I've recorded it on. Here's the rotoscope version. You can see those missing elements that I didn't end up cutting out. That's my bad. And then here's me inside the uni scene. So basically what I did inside of Premiere is where I ended up um, uh, composing everything and putting everything together. Could have used After Effects, but 
I didn't really need to in this case, or maybe I should have. But for tracking, basically I just, I used reference. So basically I had one version of the shot where I put a five foot nine ish model inside of uni so I can get an idea of the scale and everything and match it up as best I could. And I did some keyframe tracking for the scale and position uh, to match me up as best I could. And I also did a layer of compositing. So just kind of, I mess around. I didn't do too much. I just mess around with the color on me with the shadows and everything, try to match it up between the two as best I could. Now I don't show it here, but you will see in the cinematic. There are some mistakes with it, um, which I could have planned for a little bit better. For example, like my hand position here is a little bit too far. I'm kind of like past the, the, the dashboard there. And also later on, you'll see um, my hand ends up clipping through the table because instead of going like this around the table, I just go straight down. And so I, I just kind of hit it. I didn't really do much with it. I didn't try to fix it. I just left it as is. So hopefully you didn't notice yet. If you did, that's great. Or if you didn't notice, that's great. But now you'll you'll definitely notice because it's pretty obvious once you, once you know. Okay, so now here is the timeline inside of Uni. So inside of Uni is what I use to basically create everything. So this is where I lined up my shots. I did some basic animations, put all my assets together in here. The timeline itself isn't too complex. It's basically just a bunch of activation and animation tracks. I was still having some minor issues with the workflow. So for example, with the clips, just trying to shorten them or lengthen them or slow them down. I was having some issues. I'm not sure if it's a uni end or a my end. It's probably my end. I just don't know. But they're pretty minor. It was a pretty good process. Just again, it was also nice going from the block out to this. It was a nice process to not have to redo too much. And yeah, it was great just to add different stuff as well and just get an idea of the length and timing and everything in here. It was, it was really nice. Uh, and finally, here is some other assets that I needed to make, which weren't that important. So obviously I spent less time on them. So here are the asteroids and I used a si pretty similar method in um, Strong by 3, my previous game slash asset pack. Uh, so basically I took basically just cubes in the mined asteroid, the one I'd be inside with the ship. I could just cut a hole inside added a subdivision surface modifier, and then added a displace modifier. The displace modifier is modified using a texture. And in this case, I used a noise texture, which would kind of randomize the look. So you can see here, gives it a randomized look. You can see that kind of jagged asteroid looking uh, like thing. And then for the other smaller ones, I basically just took a cube, manipulated some of the vertices a little bit, and then it gives it a unique looking look which is very simple to create. And it also makes it easier for the future if I wanted to do like LODs um, or change the scale, add some, again, like different holes. It makes it really easy using this method. And I can change like the strength and everything just to give it the different kind of look. And here I go in texture. Texture, pretty simple texture, but you know, simple granite texture, uh, dirt and just changing the color looks pretty good. Also, I had the space station at the end very simple. I didn't add in any, any like docking ports, but I should have if I was going there on a ship. But regardless of the continuity, <laughs> um, I was using a lot of the different mirror and array elements just to make it pretty quick and simple. And then the texture was pretty basic as well. And finally, here's all the different software that I used to make the cinematic. So again, I used Uni for the rendering and animation as well as the VFX graph and shader graph um, for VFX particles and, and shading. I use Blender for all my 3D modeling, Substance Painter for the texturing. I use a little bit of Photoshop for different 2D sprites, different 2D elements like the UI and some background elements. I use After Effects for rotoscoping, Premiere for editing and compositing, and Pure Ref to gather my reference images. So now what I'm going to do is go through the actual cinematic itself, talk about different shots, go shot by shot, and then talk about some more stuff. Okay, so the first sequence here is the ship mining rock. Uh, so here I have the sparks. You can see a little bit of the ship, the rocks pulled away. Um, the animation isn't that great here uh, because the ship coming in is kind of weird. Um, the mining, the drill bit rotating is okay, but the rocks kind of animating away are kind of, you see kind of jagged looking. Um, I kind of wish I just added some more noise to that just made it look a little bit more organic, um, but it's not a bad opening shot. I kind of like the idea of starting from black and then revealing some light to, um, to see what's going on. So here's my first hero shot, the main shot, uh, the composite shot with me, my favorite shot. <laughs> so you see I have my pull in here. The tracking is decent, but I could have done better. Uh, but honestly, it's not 
not a bad shot. Like I, I really like the shot. You can pan past the asteroids and get an idea of me inside the ship and what the actual ship is, kind of understand what's going on here. The sound effects also, uh, you know, I spent a little bit of time at least finding them and adding them. Uh, kind of helps to sell the idea of like the ship stopping and kind of being old and, and rusted and stuff like that. Again, with this shake kind of here, like the ship shake, again, I could have improved the animation. That's the thing I kind of wish also as well. I didn't spend too much on the animation. Like I had the basic keyframes, but I didn't do too much in terms of like easing and adding different noise and um, making it smooth or less smooth in different areas. Um, the, light, the lighting here isn't too bad. Um, I was having some issues in, in terms of like lighting dynamic versus stack, static elements and the ship is kind of static, but not, but overall lighting is not too bad, but I still wish I would have improved that. And yeah, here's where you can see, yeah, here's where you can see my, uh, my hand clip through because of the mask. I was hoping you didn't notice, but that, uh, that definitely happened. <laughs> All right. So now here's the first, uh, like the flyby shots. So here's my ship coming out of the asteroid, turning around, uh, and going home. And I wish uh, I kind of like even just had a little bit more of a pause here and then fired up the engines and had it speed up a little bit more. But the composition I think is pretty good in this shot. Um, maybe wish I kind of up the textures in terms of the asteroid. Maybe had some more background stuff going on. But I do like the shot and cueing the music and the sound effects. This flyby shot is pretty good as well. You know, asteroids and you flying by. Not too much going on, but the asteroid animations are decent. They look like they're floating, which is which is good. Uh, this shot, honestly, was probably one of my least favorite because it's just a simple, like another ship flying by. And it's, you know, it, it gets you the idea that there's more ships coming. Um, you're not like completely alone. You're alone in the ship, but not in terms of um, like your, your group. You know, there's other survivors out there at least, or however I decided to do the story. But, you know, I wish I had more going on. I was I had initially planned to do some, like, nebula or some sort of, like, weird space-looking thing in the background, but um, end up changing the idea for this. But this is simpler, but, you know, not as good-looking. And then here's a flyby of a planet. thought I meant to try to make it look like Mercury as a planet. Again, I didn't spend too much time on this texture. I, I think I actually even... I might have just pulled it from a previous... Like, a previous... Um, planet I did before. I was trying to change the color a little bit in the normal map just to try to make it look a little bit more like rocky and more like Mercury. This isn't such a great shot I don't think having the planet right in the middle but again I swapped out some shots here in the composition so it didn't end up spending too much time on it. Again it kind of gets you the idea of kind of scale and everything and, and the length of travel and stuff like that. And finally the second hero shot Again, also one of my favorites because it's probably the best looking. Uh, you can see the sun here as well as the space station and you're flying past. Well, it's a different angle. So it's like the spaceship coming this way rather than straight across. I think it looks a little bit nicer. And you see, I don't know if I may have not made it obvious enough. I had the riser sound effect playing, but here the sun's kind of getting brighter and, and in theory like heating up. <laughs> uh, this is kind of a, a side note, but I have an idea for the story. I want this to be like, continuitous um, with like because I want you know future episodes based on the set story I don't have the whole story in the background of this game slash universe figured out yet but I have an idea that's dealing with the sun um, so hopefully that kind of stays similar uh, this will play into that in the future when I kind of flesh it out all right so uh so I'm gonna close up here random a lot uh I, I'm pretty happy with the cinematic I'm not gonna lie um sure this stuff I definitely could have improved but overall but the amount of work I put in, I liked it. I've made some cinematics before, like some stuff for work and kind of with my previous game trailers that I've been cinematic like, but nothing like this with the amount of assets and the storytelling element. Um, this is kind of new for me. I'm not using that as an excuse. I'm just you know, being being straight. Um, I haven't done something like this, um, but I've taken some elements of the stuff I've done previously and hopefully did some of those justice. And this is just gonna come with more time and practice just to get better at doing this. I really like this. Um, you know, I do really like enjoy the game development side, but I've been enjoying a lot more the storytelling and the cinematic side, especially watching like The Expanse and Star Wars and um, you know, these different shows to try to create my own world and, and stuff like that. And this is a this is a good first step into the storytelling and, and stuff like that. And I definitely feel like I'm going to continue doing stuff like this. And hopefully when I do future stuff like this, I'll put in even more time. I only put in like 
10 to 15 hours into all this as a whole, I think, maybe maybe 20. So not like a ton of time, but a decent chunk. Um, and it was, you know, sort of short, short, but with more time and effort, you know, I'll be able to make them longer and higher quality um, and hopefully uh, keep improving my skills. And so in terms of what the future is going to look like, what uh, this channel and everything, um, I'm aiming to have something new by the end of the summer. So that's like August, early September-ish. I don't know if that's going to be another cinematic, if that's going to be a demo for this game, whatever this game may be, or if it's going to be both, I don't know, but I'm going to keep working on something along these lines, and I'm trying to make it a, a goal of mine, or a deadline, to have something um, delivered by the end of summer. So just be, be on the lookout for that. Uh, and yeah, and so please let me know your feedback. I, again, I want to get better at this. Um, so if you have any like major or minor feedback, you know, please, I'm not going to get my feelings hurt. Um, I, I want to improve with this and, you know, keep doing this and keep getting better. So please leave me a comment or you can reach out to me through discord. Also, if you had any questions on like how I made this, you know, I'm not, again, I'm not an expert, but I'm, I'm pretty good at least at knowing what my process was. I went into detail of what I did, but if you want to know more, know the different programs I used or different tips I may have, if you're starting out, um, you know, please reach out. All right. So, uh, so thank you for watching. I love you forever. And I'll see you in the next video slash cinematic slash demo, uh, whatever I do next. Take care.